Good morning, everybody. And uh, S&P 500 is really, really looking stretched. If we just get some diagonals in and uh, bear with me a second, just want to get this lined up. There are two, or well, there's a couple, but let's just take that one there. So it doesn't really matter how you draw it, and I can extend it back down to January here. But bottom line is we are touching the top of the diagonal trend line. We have a, another trend line at the bottom here, which runs like that, which gives you a, a wedge. Okay, it just gives you a triangle, and triangles are pretty much... Uh, very very important because it often indicates that you have a, a pullback um, coming and if you tie it up with a lot of the the indicators that we do have so we've got the indicators on the chart here the stochastics and they are grouped to the upside and they're being grouped they can be grouped for quite some time but it's always a warning when they do get to this you can see typically a sort of group and then they, they drift lower and give you another opportunity to get in. You can see that was quite a big pullback um, through the week. But at the moment, we've got two levels here that we want to pay attention to. Obviously, if we do break through the bottom of this uh, triangle, then your target's going to be a little bit lower. And I'm going to put these in because that's kind of... And the last target would be this pin bar over here. Uh, we'll get to the actual levels now. Let's just get down to the lower time frames because that is quite important to just see what price is doing right now. So last week was uh, kind of the, half of the first part of the week was confused. We were all over the place. And then we broke through, then we went sideways, and then it just sort of exhaustion to the upside. You can see the sellers coming in here just before the close, and then we continued. Um, no profit taking at all, really, from the weekly. So no, I think either we have extreme greed at the moment, or uh, you know, the institutions know something we don't. But uh, for me, when we get down to the hour, what we're looking for is a move down to 5,000. We want to come back and test this 5,000. So we do have one pin bar here on the hour. So that could be the first signal that uh, we do have a rear test that's happened there. And then obviously we're looking for structure for another move, but there is no other structure and we are at all time highs. And you might as well just put that pin bar in there. You can see we did close below it on Friday. Um, and that was at 52.4. So this 52.5 area, I don't think you need to be paying too much attention to that. Uh, this is the key one for me, which is 55,000. Uh, if we drop below 5,000, then we should be revisiting uh, 49.74. Have a look at the gaps. There are some, there's a gap there. Uh, there's another gap all the way down here. And where is that one? The high, that's at 49.44. So you do have some gaps. And I think if you get down to the 15 minute, you're probably going to see a lot more on the gap side. Okay, that one's closed. Uh, 5,005 is a gap. 5,020 is a gap. So you can see there's a whole lot of gaps all the way down. And then sort of on Friday, right down here at the bottom at 49.96, there are still gaps as well. And not only gaps, but there is a very strong zone of support down here. So, yeah, it's a little bit, um, a little bit suspect for me. Friday's price action was there's the high of uh, not the previous day but the day before so that would have been uh, Wednesday's uh, Wednesday's high and that was that where we touched 5,000 
And if you look at the 15 minute, we'd broken through, then price came back inside bar, pin bar on 5,000 and then got going. So that was your, your cue. As soon as we got this breakthrough, I think this was on the rev revised CPI data that came out, we, we kind of uh, bulleted to the top and then came back and the buyer stepped in down here. So this is the zone I'd be paying attention to. So 5,000 is definitely the area I want to be paying attention to. Um, this gap that we have here is going to be important. So 52.4 and then oh, 52.4. Yeah, 52.5, 52.4. That is the area that you need to be conscious of. Then just below it, you have a another area which could offer some support. That's at 52.3. So the trick for today is lower time frames. The trend is up until it's not. And for all intents and purposes, we would need to drop below the low of uh, Friday. So in other words, we need to break below 5,000 for anything to to transpire so i would be paying attention to what happens today we'll probably be sideways to be honest um, if we do drop below uh, 5024 and come back and reject it then you know you've probably got a bit of a, a little drift lower but i wouldn't be wanting to chase those shorts the only time i'll be looking at a shorts is a break below 5000 and a retest or a rejection of that and start moving down. That's the only time we'd be looking at shorts that would get us below the the, um, the 150 EMA as well. So for now, trend is up. No real reason to think otherwise. You're looking for a pullback and uh, your pullbacks at the moment are 5024, 5016 and 5,000 would be the ultimate test at the moment. I think that would be fairly interesting if we do get back down there. Targets the upside, very difficult to ascertain targets. And as I said, you have a diagonal um, le support level here. And I'd be very, very reluctant to jump in long right at this diagonal support. Uh, even if you do get above it and build a base, you know, the probability of it breaking higher on a diagonal like that is only 25%. So rather wait for the pullback, buy the dip, and then get moving again. Hope that helps, and uh, we'll catch up with you tomorrow morning. Cheers for now.